Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Yeah, growingandgrace.org, uh, the, the website for the podcast. I'm Joel Brzezinski, along with Mike Kapler. Thanks for uh, joining us as we talk casually. Just a very casual talk about the grace of God. You know, Cap, you and I, we've known each other for 27 years as of, I was going to say as of today, that the day that we are recording this, I had actually met you a few weeks earlier. I, I, I just remembered. But the day that we're recording this right now is the day that I first, uh, you first trained me to be on the radio at um, KWOF, 850 AM. In well, I, I remember that. You, um, we worked late nights sometimes yes. doing that stuff. That's right, because the station was an AM station that went off the air at sunset. And so for three nights in a row... Those first three days, you tra- you trained me for a couple hours, <laughs> and then <laughs> you said uh, on the at the end of the third day, say I had no experience whatsoever in radio, nothing. In fact, as I've shared on the podcast here before, doing radio was the furthest thing from my mind. I would never have ever dreamed of being in front of a microphone. Um, my how things have changed, huh? But so at the end of the third day, you said, "All right, let's do the same thing tomorrow." And then you then you kind of pulled the thing on me. You said, "Actually, what I was thinking is, I'll just put you on the air tomorrow." And after six hours of <laughs> of training with no experience, I did an hour um, at the end of the final th- th- that last day. And then from that point on, I was I was on the air. And boy, I struggled at first, but eventually I kind of caught on. And now I have uh, no problem being behind the microphone. <laughs> Boy, when you you start talking in terms of 27 years, and and uh, I think I mentioned that number a few programs ago too, when I was talking about walking in grace compared to whatever it was we were walking in before, when it came to uh, our Christianity. But really, there there was this intersect that took place because uh, I think we met probably within a a few months of me coming uh, across that that line, that, mm-hmm. that grace line, so to speak. I, I came to a whole new realization of what the gospel was. And I imagine Joel started getting some earfuls <laughs> <laughs> because I was getting pretty fired up about it. Um, and it was and all it's almost good. like, you know, God was orchestrating this um, spiritual etch-a-sketch or something where you and I just sort of came together on it. And here we are all these years later. It's just an amazing thing. Yeah, and it, and it was good, and I was loving it because, you know, at the time, I think I mentioned last week or the week before about how some cer- certain thing that I said on the radio one time that, you know, some of God's promises are conditional. You know, I was mixing the old covenant with the new. And at the same time that that was going on, I know that you were sharing things with me, and I was... It was all refreshing to me, but I was just spouting stuff that I had been taught previously. I was just saying things that I had been taught. But then the, the things that you were sharing me, it all made sense to me. It all was gelling with me. It was so good. And I've shared the story about how almost impossible it was that God got me into radio up there. It's just, it, it wouldn't have happened without miracles, without certain a certain... It, chain of events happening and so it just it was all orchestrated by God and and that's eventually it was 10 years then after that that we started the podcast um after well, that's, we had that's grown. what I was just going to say Joel was that you know, your start in radio are coming together at that time where where grace was really beginning to reveal what what the gospel really should be uh, to me and then to you and then uh, to us together to, to me, you know, that that intersect through the etch sketch where we, we came together uh, 27 years ago, it, it, there, there, I think God had something bigger in mind. As cool as it was for us to be doing the radio thing, what we've been doing with the podcast thing all of these past 16 plus years has been even bigger because we can go around the world with it and we're not hindered by what we can say or not say and, right. and 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 those kinds of things and of course clash of the covenants the book it was kind of birthed from the podcast and a lot of people being blessed by that so yeah sometimes you don't see it while it's happening but then you can look back on the on the roadmap have you ever done one of those uh, apps on your phone where you 
you, you, you take a walk or whatever, or you, you know, you run or you go around the neighborhood or maybe it's on your GPS, but, uh, then you look back and you see the, you know, you see the map, you see where you were and where you, where you are now. And that's what we're able to do. We're able to look back and say, you know, um, God really orchestrated some things that we probably didn't even realizing re- realize that that's what he was doing at the time. Right, exactly. It reminds me of a guy who did a bicycle ride across uh, the United States, and he purposely did the shape of a dinosaur so that when he tracked it on the map, it was the shape. But anyway, that's neither here nor there, but I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> but I know <laughs> that there are a lot of people hanging on the edge of their seats because last week we left with kind of a cliffhanger. With this verse, well, this couple of verses from Galatians 5, and we did at least try to help you, you feel a little better about it at the end, but Paul talks about in Galatians 5.19 how the works of the flesh are evident, and he lists all these bad things that people do, and he says, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, we did kind of soften the blow by helping you uh, to realize that he's not talking about believers. If you read the first four chapters and even into five um, leading up to this, Paul is telling them about their solid security that they have in Christ apart from their works. The works of the flesh have nothing to do with our salvation, whether they're good works of the flesh or whether we do bad works. It's all about being saved by grace through faith apart from works. Our works having nothing to do with that. He's actually scolding them for thinking that their good works the works of the law, could have anything to do with this. But what he's saying here, and and this is is so crucial, so important, because people will take this out of context, and they'll they'll build entire doctrines about how if you do these things, you're not going to to inherit the kingdom of God, or you're going to lose your salvation. That's what a lot of people say. But he's talking, he's saying that these are things that are evident in people who will not inherit the kingdom of God. So people who, who who will not inherit the kingdom of God, it's people who don't believe, people who have not put their faith in Christ. And they're the ones who, by default, by nature, let's put it that way, practice these things, all of these things that Paul mentions. Now, as a believer, we might sometimes do these things, but it's because as you said last week, we're not in the flesh. Paul says that we are no longer in the flesh. We are in the spirit. Whether you act like it or not, Christ has come to live in you, and you are in him. You are in the spirit at all times, even if you're not acting like it. If I get down on uh, on my hands and knees and bark like a dog, I'm acting like a dog. I'm not acting like who I am, but I am still who I am. I'm still a human being. My actions do not change who I am. I can quack like a duck, I can whatever, but I'm I'm still who I am, and I'm still inheriting all the things that as a human being I inherit. Well, in Christ, because of Christ and what he has done, you're an heir of God and a co-heir with Christ. If you do these things, you're not going to lose your inheritance. But Paul is saying, he says a few verses earlier, you, brethren, have been called to liberty, only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. So he, what he's saying here is that you have liberty. You can do whatever you want. But just because you can do whatever you want, don't use your liberty as an opportunity to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Don't use your freedom to do that. That's not who you are. The people who do those things aren't going to inherit the kingdom of God. So why would you want to do that? That's the gist of what he's saying. He's not saying they're going to lose their salvation. He's just saying, why live like that if that's not who you are? Yeah, uh, exactly. And, you know, again, some of what Paul is saying here and what we know as Galatians chapter 5, he's saying some of these things based on things that he said earlier in the letter, like in the first four chapters, right? And even going back, you went back a little bit there, Joel, but I'll go back even further to the beginning of of 5.1 in Galatians. It is for freedom Christ has set you free. Uh, Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery or a yoke of bondage. I, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. It will profit you nothing, in other words. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision 
that he is obligated to keep the whole law. Why is that? Because the law came as a package. All 613 were packaged together. There was no breaking up of the law. You couldn't take anything away from it. You didn't add anything to it. You know, some people like in, in the New Covenant today, in New Testament Christianity, some people, probably a lot of churches, they like to just uh, siphon out some things from the old law and mix them with uh, some sort of church doctrine of, of grace and, and, you know, combine them into the same Bible blender. You're obligated to keep the whole law if you're going to go for circumcision. So you are severed from Christ. You who would be justified by what you do, you have fallen away from grace. So Paul said those things earlier in, in this same chapter, and this is all in context with each other here, see? So these things where he talks about what, what Joel just read from, these desires of the flesh, the flesh and the spirit uh, going against each other, opposed to each other, keeping people in Christ from doing the things that they want to do. But he's trying to encourage people here. This, right. this isn't, I, I get it, I get it from the mindset that you may have been coming from, just like I was at one time. The things that we've learned, the things we've been taught by people who are passing on things that were taught to them that might not be quite right. If you're led by the spirit, you are not under the law. And the, the, those works of the flesh, you are not in the flesh. The fruit of the Spirit, that's where we abide. That's where, that's where we want God and his life flowing through us. It's not our fruit, it's his fruit. We're not the vine, we're just the branch. We're not the fruit producer, you know, we're just bearing fruit. And, and it's his fruit. And, and, you know, something else Paul said here while we have just a minute left. Verse 14 for the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, if you're going to pluck that verse out of the context of what we've got going on here, people are going to start thinking, see, if I just love my neighbor as myself, I can fulfill the law. That isn't what you're meant to do. Nobody has ever been able to do that. Nobody's even been able to follow that one command along with loving the Lord their God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. Nobody has ever been able to do it. Jesus fulfilled the law on your behalf. So it's just easy to pluck verses out of context, especially outside of the new covenant context that we have today and misunderstand them. Right. So with all of these things, whenever, as we wrap up here for this week, anytime you come across a verse that doesn't seem to make sense with the new covenant, that doesn't seem to make sense with God's grace, like uh, verses in, in Romans 2 and Romans 1 that we've talked about in, in recent times, Look at the context. Read around what Paul is saying and look at his bigger point. Look what he has already said. Look what he's leading up to. And you'll see that he's making, he's usually making a bigger point. Uh, it's partly just Paul's writing style. And it's just partly the fact that we do need context when we read things. We, we just need to look at the bigger picture and then things make so much more sense when you, when you look at it as a whole. And there is a whole lot more to look at in 1 Corinthians 6. You know, today we've been talking mostly about Galatians 5 where Paul talks about those who do certain fleshly things and how they won't inherit the kingdom of God. We looked at that in context and in 1 Corinthians 6 he says something very similar and there is even more context there. Uh, really good stuff. So we'll get into 1 Corinthians 6 and uh, some other things next week right here on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace. Growing in Grace.